As sea levels rise, as ice melts, as the Arctic changes, responsibilities of the U.S. Navy will increase. We need to be able to operate forward in every ocean, every maritime environment in the world. Being ready to do that as the Arctic opens up uh, more and more during the summer months is a key part of what, we're, what the Navy is doing uh, to look at the Arctic. The Office of Naval Research and the U.S. Navy are working with global partners to measure Arctic changes and determine what that means for U.S. Navy ships in a challenging environment like the Arctic. So we developed the, what we call the Arctic Roadmap, which is a plan of action and milestones for the um, five-year plan to um, prepare the Navy of the future. The Navy has three goals. Better physical understanding of what's going on in the Arctic. Better ways to observe the Arctic. Incorporating that knowledge into a prediction system. 30-something years, the length of the satellite record, we've seen a steady decrease in the amount of sea ice that remains at the end of summer in the Arctic Ocean. The Office of Naval Research is studying changes that are happening in the Arctic. The study area is referred to as the marginal ice zone, defined as the dynamic area where the frozen ocean meets the open ocean. The rapid changes that are occurring throughout the Arctic environmental system right now, there's growing evidence that they have an impact at lower latitudes where we live. Everyday lives could be affected by these changes happening in the Arctic. The Office of Naval Research's Marginal Ice Zone Initiative is in place to better understand the changing dynamic in this highly challenging region of the world. So the Marginal Ice Zone is this region uh, in, the, in the ice between the, the dense pack ice and the open ocean. As the ice begins to diminish, it's much more dynamic. You have full ice cover during the winter, and then during the summer, a lot of it melts back, and a lot more has been melting back than, than previously. And so the physics of this marginal ice zone, where that's where the melting is really occurring, where the, where the ice is breaking up, becoming smaller and smaller flows, and then ultimately melting out, understanding those physics is critical to being able to understand and model this region. Research in the Arctic is done with sensors. This work is done below, on, and above the ocean. The Sea Ice Zone Reconnaissance Survey Program included ocean, ice, and atmospheric measurements tracking changes. These experiments are key to better understanding this dynamic frontier. When we see pe people able to access the Arctic for tourism, for shipping, and for mineral exploration, uh, our response capability is going to have to increase here. It's going to be really important for us to learn how to operate up here. With the, with the Coast Guard uh, flying in their uh, C-130, we can fly out over the ice in June and we can drop expendable current probes and expendable CTDs instruments that measure the ocean properties. We drop those through openings in the ice. So we're basically able to do the job of an oceanographic ship, but we do it from the air. We can go fly a thousand miles north of here, up way into the Arctic, where almost no one has ever been, and then we can still perform aerial drop procedures down low, aerial drop procedures up high. Whatever the scientists need, we can get their gear in position with this aircraft. We've just completed a flight out over the Arctic Ocean from Dead Horse up towards the North Pole. The whole point of this is to track the changes in the atmosphere and the ocean and the sea ice uh, across the zone that we call the seasonal ice zone. Arctic ice zone research shows significant decrease in ice cover at the end of summer. Of course, the people that live in the Arctic, it changes their whole way of life in terms of uh, subsistence uh, hunting and gathering of things to eat. And just their modes of transportation, all those things are affected. So because of the opening up of the Arctic, the Navy is anticipating that it might have to send surface vessels up there at some point. ONR's research is helping determine what the future will look like for U.S. Navy ships. Academia and, and government can really work together to create this comprehensive field program that enables the Coast Guard to fulfill its mission, the Navy to fulfill its mission, and for us, it's a really wonderful boon to get all those data. Well, the Arctic is primarily an ocean. It has been ice covered, but in recent years, recent decades, that ice cover has diminished. Because of the rate of change, uh, we have time to prepare, and our primary mission is to be ready and capable if and when called upon. Pretty much every mission that the Navy does uh, will be different in the Arctic than it is anywhere else. Both the operational Navy and the Coast Guard for years have relied on the great work of the Office of Naval Research and 
the research that it basically supports are critical to our Navy's, Navy capabilities that we have today and are going to be, in my opinion, even more important to the future. As the Arctic changes and sea lanes open, operational demands on the U.S. Navy will increase, and ONR research over the coming years will help chart the course.